GMK Tech's Knuckbox M3 Mini PC joins the mid-range with the i5-12450H, an 8-core CPU with UHD graphics. Currently, it comes in at $340 for the 16-512GB model on the official website and Amazon.com. You can also increase the storage and memory size. 1TB for an extra $18 is a no-brainer. The M3 is a mini PC more pitched at the home office or business side of things, but how does the Knuckbox M3 hold up? But before that, Ease Us To Do Backup Home is an award winning backup solution to keep your data safe, backup, clone, upgrade or transfer your system easily, and protect it from ransomware. To Do Backup Home even supports backing up to the cloud. Trial it for free with a link in the video description. The Knuckbox M3 is a pretty nice looking mini PC and doesn't sting on the materials. This one has a nice metal case to give you the warm and fuzzies while you're fondling it in your hands. What are we talking about? Oh right, mini PCs. Note the top and bottom covers are plastic, so there's that too. Otherwise, no complaints. What you'll get inside the box is the mini PC, manual, HDMI cord, smallish power supply, monitor mount, and screws. The front comes with dual USB 3 ports and the power button. Widescreen? Not sure. Doesn't really fit with the rest of the Mini. On the back is the audio jack, dual HDMI 2.0, Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, dual USB 3, and a USB Type C 10 gigabit with display out. All the USB 3 Type A ports are 5 gigabit, and you can run triple 4K 60 displays with this Mini. Opening up the Knuckbox M3 is pretty simple. Four exposed screws and pop open the lid. To this day, it still infuriates me that every mini PC isn't this easy to open. Anyway, inside we have dual channel DDR4-3200 memory. There's also an extra M.2-2242 slot for a storage expansion, which supports Gen 3 NVMe or SATA. And there's an included M.2-2280 Lexa Gen 3 NVMe drive, which has a heatsink on it. Good job! This slot supports PCIe Gen 4 according to the specs. Underneath it is the CMOS battery and a Realtek Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 M.2 card. For quick access to the essentials, this one gets a triple thumbs up. Come on. There we go. The M3 comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro. Testing Ubuntu off a USB drive, it mostly worked. I did run into a problem with the HDMI audio input. It's not showing as an output device. So as it is now, without any further updates or troubleshooting, HDMI audio output doesn't work. All right, now let's check out the benchmarks. Intel's i5-12450H is a strong performer in single core, easily beating the 11th gen units by around 10%. It's 5% behind the 12th gen i7 I tested. The M3 is another box that has multiple power level settings in the BIOS. I tested the 35 and 45 watt modes, which affect multi-core performance, fan noise, and CPU temperature. The M3 at the default power limit is 5% ahead of the Gen 11 i5. At 45 watts, it matches the 12th Gen i7's lower limit, but it's 13% behind when it has the power limit increased. That changes with video encoding. The M3 gets beaten easily by the i7 in either power mode. It's 5% ahead of the 11th gen i7 at 45 watts. The 3D Mark graphics score is far ahead of the 11th gen Intel units, but 34% behind the i7 in DX11 and 33% in DX12. Since it's 48 versus 64 EUs on the chip, there's no surprises here. In any case, for office and business work, this mini PC is plenty powerful, so let's look at another workload like 4K video editing, which is much more performance intensive and benefits from Intel's QuickSync H.264 hardware decoding, which is the most common video codec in use. And 4K video editing on this box is fine. It's pretty responsive scrubbing across the timeline and playback is okay with the default half resolution preview. So the 3D Mark graphic benchmark scores that the i5-12450H bring back aren't impressive and I wouldn't think too hard about gaming on this mini PC. But you can of course game on it, if you keep your expectations in check. 
It does fine with some esports titles that are more heavily CPU focused. Valorant stays above 100 FPS. League of Legends is a game that could run on a potato, and even on very high 1080p, still manages 200 plus frames per second. Not a In League of Legends, you control a Here's how the M3 handles the hardest to emulate Wii U game. Not bad. And PS3 is interesting since Wipeout runs pretty well. Skate 3 is unplayable. And Motor Storm does pretty well too. Idle Power Draw is the same as the GMK Tech i7 model I reviewed previously. Max Power Draw depends on the power limit set in the BIOS, but it's under 80 watts. CPU temp held up okay at the default power limit, but not so great at the higher one, and thermal throttling kicked in. Fan noise depends on the power mode used. It's not super noisy compared to the others, but it isn't amazing either. With a 35 watt power limit, it's on the lower end of the chart, and 45 watts adds quite a bit of extra fan noise. Unless you need the extra multi-core CPU performance, I'd leave it at the default 35 watt setting. The included Lexa NVMe SSD drive performs pretty well as a Gen 3 drive. It didn't thermal throttle during my tests. The included heatsink did its job. Alright, so the conclusion. The GMK Tech Knuckbox M3 has a nice design with a metal case. If you're planning to edit videos with H.264 files, this box handles it pretty well for a mini PC. I'm happy to see a heatsink on the NVMe drive and there's an additional storage expansion slot. The ability to change power modes best to suit your needs is nice. You can lower it to reduce fan noise at the expense of CPU performance. However, at the 45 watt power mode in the BIOS, the fan is noisy under load and CPU temp is high. There's no USB 4 port for some Thunderbolt action and a Gen 4 NVMe drive would also have been good to see. As an Intel mini PC, the GMK Tech M3 does the job for the mid-range, but if you're looking for more power, you can check out the GMK Tech K3 Pro, featuring the i7-12650H right here. Cheers!